Okay, I just came back from the COVID test and I just got results. I'm negative. Let's go! We are going to Paris to go to Ethereum conference and just hang out. I haven't packed anything. We literally need to go to bed in an hour because we have to wake up at 4 a.m. Will we make the flight? That's the question. All right, guys, so I'm here at the Ethereum conference. I am walking up the stairs to go to my next talk. It's gonna be about how NFTs and DAOs will be used for social good. I've met with like a bunch of cool speakers and founders and casually Vitalik Buterin was sitting behind me. Fun fact. Okay, I'm reunited with Amanda. We're at this Poke place. It looks insane. This place is called Poke Fresh. If you're ever in the fifth district, it's so cute. All right, Poke was great. I'm now here at this cafe called Strata. I'm meeting with Beth. She is a marketing manager at this company called Genosis. I feel like Emma Chamberlain when she like goes on these like New York Fashion Week or Paris Fashion Week meetings, but I'm not at Paris Fashion Week. I'm at an Ethereum conference. I know it's been a crazy day. It's like 5 p.m. I came back from my meeting with Beth. It was really great. We we're talking about DAOs, creator economy. I'm about to go to my photo shoot. All right, this is the fit. Meeting with my friend Nico, the subscriber. So shout out to the Dharma Nation for being a real one. Let's go. All right, the shoot went really well. Me and Amanda are about to get some din dins, and we're gonna get also some drinks at this rooftop bar. I want to shout out to the, this hotel. I just really have to because they gave me and Amanda free water bottles. Literally, water in Paris in general in hotels is super expensive. If you guys are ever in Paris, just go to. Van Saint Germain. But yeah, we're gonna go to dinner. Made us fit of the day. Oh my god. Cute, cute. So I'm here at a rooftop party with some tech bros. A lot of orange juice. Good morning. Currently, I'm getting ready for day number two in Paris. But I'm gonna see you guys at the conference. We're gonna get some coffee. Conference is right there. Okay, so we're literally going to the conference not to like absorb information, but for her to get coffee. Um, because there's a free coffee bar. All right, back from last night. I went to a after party sponsored by Ave. Apparently in the crypto world, a lot of these companies host after parties that are more party than business. It was like Parisian rave, so there was like drinks music and it was really fun. But I went back home at 2 a.m. and now I'm catching up on work. Something that's really difficult is traveling and observing a new location, but at the same time maintaining the work you have to do before people yell at you. So I got some kind of angry emails. They didn't respond last night, so I'm replying to those. But the good thing is I have a great team that supports me. Shout out to Abby, shout out to Amanda, shout out to Becky for helping me out. But I have some shit I have to do. So I'm gonna go do it right now. So I know a lot of you guys ask, Jade, how do you build a team and how do you scale a brand if you don't have funding. Well, normally I'd be like, good luck! Get your own money and bootstrap it. But I just found out of this amazing brand called ClearCo and I'm partnering with them today on this video. ClearCo helps entrepreneurs get instant funding. So if you have an e-commerce brand, right? You need to hire employees, you need to scale inventory, but you don't get the moolah, all you gotta do is apply to ClearCo. Put in your information. In under a minute, you can find out how much funding you're qualified for. In addition, you own 100% of your brand. ClearCo does not take equity, which basically means you get to choose how much of a sales percentage you wanna repay ClearCo back, and it's all on your own terms. ClearCo is backed by crazy investors, and it helps women get funding eight times more than regular venture capital. I'm very passionate, as you can tell. I don't remember how many times when I was first starting my business, I needed funding, whether it was to go to company trips like this, or to have a team and hire an assistant or editor. ClearCo makes it easy for you guys. If your business needs any sort of funding, check the link in my description box to get some moolah. Thank you, ClearCo, for sponsoring today's video, and let's go back to the Parisian Paris vlog. Okay, so these are the foods I got at Ethereum Conference day three. Chocolate muffin, ham, and potato beef stew. Pre-salad, cucumber and ham sandwich. Potato salad, yay! Hi, um, I'm Paula Petit. I'm the head of business development at Lim Lab, our blockchain product development house. I've been in the industry for about four years, successfully founded and sold two startups. Since then, I've kind of hopped around the US, uh, the EU, and now the UK with several different kind of blockchain 
That's so impressive. Yeah. What's your advice for people that want to be in crypto but they don't feel capable based on their like technical skills? Yeah. So for me, you know, I decided I wanted to go business development. You know, I really like making connections and kind of sharing the word. So fortunately, it wasn't necessary for me to have really, really strong technical skills just to be passionate about the technology, be able to talk about it and um, communicate based off that. So I mean, you could start off just going to these conferences, going to these events, going to these meetups and just chatting with people and really starting off from a base from there in the startup realm. This is such a rapidly growing industry and such a progressive industry that even if you do want to be a Solidity developer, you can just start learning it online and I promise you, you will get a job. You're here at Ethereum Paris, you are working in crypto, like what was your main advice to your younger self? Like imagine a lot of our audience is like Gen Z, like just starting their career, like what's your biggest advice for picking a path in first place too? I mean, first off, don't just go for the first thing that appears, like actually see what you're interested in, like what is something that you can see like really diving in and where there's passion you're gonna find a career so if you're you, if you find yourself really really passionate and just kind of dive into it the opportunities will come y'all I just got a text that I should come to this party tonight he texts me this which is like a little alarming I'm like okay um I don't know how to dress in style I'm literally wearing tennis skirt and sneaker so we need to change that we need to find an outfit where I look Paris chic and we're gonna go to Zara I just ordered my uber from the conference room I found my outfit of the day and I'm late for dinner but here's the fit got this dress from Zara and all my accessories are from H&M. I have a rash on my arm and I smell kind of sweaty, but hopefully this is good enough for dinner. Good morning. Um, it's last in Paris and we're going to spend it hopefully doing some fun stuff. I just woke up and oh my God. I hate being one of those people, but last night was crazy. I met a lot of cool people in crypto. <laughs> Yummy. All right, guys, so it's the last day here. Paris, we're leaving this afternoon. I have my breakfast. I have more food, don't you worry. Okay, so this is my coffee. This is a cafe called La Strada. It's the only cafe in Paris I swear has iced coffee. I don't know why it's so hard to find. And of course, I have to get my matcha mix. This is a matcha. Cake. It kind of tastes like corn bread, but it was matcha flavored. It's really good. Me and Amanda are trying to decide on the YouTube thumbnail and title. I'm struggling with it a little bit. It's this video right here. By the time you see it, I hope it's doing well. But picking titles and thumbnails are definitely one of the hardest things to do because once the video is created, you want to make sure that it has the highest optimization. We're going to be walking around Paris, going to take Amanda to her first time to Chipotle. And then we're gonna do some work and then go on our flight. Okay, so I'm gonna ask, what's the worst and best thing about being a female in business? Let's start with the worst things. Okay, the worst thing I think is feeling like you have to fight the tech bros, okay? Not all tech bros are awful, most of them are great, but when you're outnumbered, that's the issue, okay? But the bros just don't talk to you. I've been in rooms where um, founders that run tech companies, we call them tech bros, uh, just think that you're either a pretty influencer model or you're in marketing. Like no one expects you, if you're in business, to maybe run your own company or know technical aspects of Ethereum. I, in terms of the best thing, it's definitely because the women in business is a smaller community, but growing, it's a very flourishing, vibrant community. So a lot of my friends that are founders, they inspire me so much because it's really hard. I love the community, but I also love the fact that it's, you know, a challenge. Okay, next question is from Emily. Is it possible to run a business and dating at the same time? Well, sometimes I feel like dating and business it requires priority. So if you want to run a successful business, you can still date both. It's underneath the main goal. However, if you want to find love, you know, I know a lot of people in my life are getting older, want to have kids. They set aside their goals and ambition for, for love. And I think that's okay. Personally, for me, I am very focused on my career. <laughs> very focused on my career. And, and my business access media and my team and I put dating still in a part of my life but not my priority. In French we have the saying called uh, c'est la vie which means the, that's life. <laughs> 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 so Liz asks, where do you imagine yourself working which gives you butterflies in your stomach? I would say 
if you're someone that is not excited about your work, it's usually because you're bored. You have to figure out like what makes it fun for you. For the longest time, I was bored of making YouTube videos. Like I just didn't want to film in my room. That was just, like last year, you know, I was stuck inside. But then I asked myself like, what would make it fun? And typically it's two things. It's first going to a new scenery, so traveling if you're able to, and the second thing is working with creative people. So obviously I had to wait it out, but I started to ask my friends, you know, hey, what do you watch? Like giving, asking them for feedback on like, what videos are fun, what videos are cool, and then working with creative people naturally made it more interesting. In addition to that, traveling does help. If you can't travel, just literally film in a new park or walk outside. So those are the two things that really give me butterflies and gives me excitement in my videos or my work. Me and Amanda are getting lunch. We're at this Mediterranean place and we have this like joke where I make fun of Amanda for eating hummus and chips. Like I think it's so weird. But then I tried it and it's actually really good. This hummus is also really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Also got this mango harissa for lunch. Mm.